Good morning, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. I wanted to come to you today with a mail haul. Um, I recently received a whole bunch of books in the mail. Uh, Todd from Todd's Bursting Bookcase sent me two gigantic boxes full of books. And so I wanted to show you what he sent me. I'm going to do it in three parts. I'm going to do three different videos for this because there was quite a few of them and uh, I don't want the videos to get like an hour long. Uh, so I'll do them in short segments. And um, I also got a book in the mail from Todd at Todd's booktube channel and um, so I wanted to show you those and yeah let's just get started so first of all let me let me uh, start this off with talking about the last time that I went to the um, books revisited store the used bookstore that I really like to go to down in St. Joseph St. Joseph uh, Missouri um I got a whole bunch of books, mostly uh, Civil War and then some Thomas Jefferson stuff. But I also picked up this book by uh, David Halberstam, uh, October 1964. And if you follow the channel, you know I love my baseball stuff. And so I was really excited to uh, read this because I'd heard really good things over the last couple of years with this channel. Everybody's asked me, have you read this? And I was like, no, I have not. I'll be on the lookout for it. And I found it in this nice hardback, uh, you know, this nice hardback copy. And then as soon as I showed it in my video, the questions began to roll in. Have you read Summer of 49 by David Halberstam? And I was like, no, I, I haven't read that one. And they were like, uh, you know, all the viewers were like, you need to read that. You will love it. Uh, as much as you like baseball, you'll love it. And so, lo and behold, this last week, Todd from Todd's BookTube channel sent me a paperback copy of Summer of 49, the classic chronicle of baseball's most magnificent season as seen through the eyes, or as seen through the, the Yankees-Red Sox rivalry, excuse me. Uh, and this is by, again, by David Halberstam, and this is a Harper Perennial Modern Classics edition and so I was really, really happy to receive this in the mail. Uh, thank you so much, Todd. This was a nice little treat. Um, I can't wait to dig into both of these books. Um, waiting on baseball to really get kick-started. Uh, we got our stuff started at school. We're working with pitchers and catchers like we can. Um, you know, we're kind of limited on how much contact we can have with the kids as we start the season, but we can work with pitchers and catchers right now, and we've got a uh, kind of a schedule set up for that. And matter of fact, I'll be doing that tonight. So my baseball is getting started and hopefully major league stuff gets, you know, last time I checked, they hadn't, uh, that's at a standstill. That's been a few, few days back when I checked that. But anyway, this, um, this edition is a 2006 edition of, of this book. And this says, uh, the year was 1949, and a war-weary nation turned from the battlefields to the ball fields in search of new heroes. It was a summer that marked the beginning of a sports rivalry unequaled in the annals of athletic competition. The awesome New York Yankees in the indomitable Boston Red Sox were fighting for supremacy of baseball's American League and an aging Joe DiMaggio in a brash, headstrong, hitting phen uh, phen uh, phenomenon named Ted Williams, led their respective teams in a classic pennant duel of almost mythic proportions, one that would be decided in an explosive head-to-head -head confrontation on the last day of the season. And again, this is by David Halberstam. There's a picture of our author. But uh, real excited to have this. Thank you so much, Todd. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, goes right in with my my baseball collection in in my library. Matter of fact, one of these days I need to make a a whole section, a whole shelf of nothing but my favorite baseball books. And um, I guess that that also reminds me to be on the lookout sometime in the near future, in the next month or so. I am going to try to put together my own uh, video of nothing but you know classic baseball books that you need to read. Um, and of course it won't be all encompassing because I haven't read them all, but I'll, I'll tell you some really good, it's like a starter kit, really good one, uh, really good baseball books that I have read that I'd like to share with you. So, uh, be looking for that in, in the next month or so. Um, so let's get to the second part of this, uh, 
book haul. And this is going to be all from Todd at Todd's Bursting Bookcase. And if you know Todd, Todd has got a ton of books in his house. And as he is moving towards the retirement stages of life, he has made a decision to revamp his library. And if you don't know anything about Todd, he at one time was had wanted to be a history teacher and just, you know, just like I am. And so um, he had based his collection on nothing but history books, or I guess he had other ones, but I mean, vast majority of them were history books and biography and stuff like that. And his collection is absolutely amazing. I love, love watching his bookshelf tours from early on in his channel. Um, I could watch them. I've watched them a couple different times. Uh, I just enjoy listening to or seeing what he's got on the shelf and listening to what he has to say about each of the volumes. He's he's a man of vast knowledge, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And um, what he's been doing as he's you know moved, like I said, he's been moving towards that retirement stage, and um, he's redoing his collection, and so he's kind of cleaning it out and and uh, calling the herd, so to speak. And he has been taking books to the library to donate, taking them to the bookstore for, I think, for credit. He's been taking them to uh, the, the free little libraries. And he's also been sending them out to extremely lucky booktubers like myself. And so I'm very thankful. Um, and he sent me a couple more boxes of books. And, and I wanted to show those to you. This first stack here, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six books that are, are um, Civil War related. The rest of them are mostly World War II-ish, you know, that time period, World War II, Cold War, that kind of stuff. But most of these, or all of these in this stack are going to be Civil War. So enough of me rambling, let's get started. So the first one on this stack of books that he sent is Citizen Sherman, A Life of William Tecumseh Sherman by Michael Fellman. Real excited to have this. Um, Sherman is a guy that I, I have a couple books upstairs on Sherman, but I've wanted to read more about Sherman. I I, I like Sherman in the, in the Civil War. He was very effective as a as a commander, and um, I've wanted to get some more stuff. I know when I went to Jackson Street Booksellers um, in Omaha, I went and I looked in their book selection. They've got a massive book selection, and they had a whole. I don't know how many shelves, three, four shelves. It seemed like it was nothing but Sherman and, or at least a lot of them were centered around Sherman. And I was, I should have bought one, but I was like almost overwhelmed. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't know what to buy. And so I did not end up buying one. I probably will next time I go. But um, anyway, Todd sent me this one. So we'll see how this one goes. I'm pretty excited about that. Cause like I said, the number two man in the, in the union towards the end of the war, um, you know, Grant's right-hand man. Pretty excited to read about him. This book is a Random House book out of New York, and it's a 1995 edition. And um, yeah, the back has got some blurbs on it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to read the inside cover because I don't want this video to last forever, so I won't read that one. Uh, it's about Sherman. So Moving into the next one, the next book that he sent was Gray Ghosts and Rebel Raiders, The Daring Exploits of the Confederate Guerrillas uh, by Virgil Carrington Jones and with a foreword by Bruce Catton. Um, I'm real excited about that. I don't have very many books on this subject, so it's always nice to get some new stuff into the collection. And... From Galahad Books out of New York, and it's a 1956 book, or, or a copyright, original copyright, but this book was printed in 1995, it looks like, 1995. So very nice to add to the collection. It says, um, read the back cover to you here, uh, join the daring and dashing daredevils who changed the course of the Civil War and transformed the art of warfare for all times, from Manassas to Gettysburg, to Appomattox, here's the full exciting story of the Confederate Irregulars, their incredible adventures from the routine destruction of bridges and railways to the brazen kidnapping of two Union generals from their beds, come to life with the immediacy of a con contemporary news report 
Their contributions to how war is waged today is illuminated as never before. And this has got a blurb from Bruce Catton. And of course, being the editor, he must have given his stamp of approval, so to speak. Um, so real excited about that. Uh, have high hopes on that. Now, uh, the next one in the stack goes really well with my collection here. If you know me very well, if you've been watching very many videos, you know I'm a Lincoln nut, a Lincoln fanatic. You'll notice several copies behind me on Lincoln. And so anything I get on Lincoln, I get real excited about because I could read about Lincoln over and over again. I, I don't know why. There's just so much stuff to learn from him, so many different uh, perceptions and, and just different viewpoints about him and how he handled slavery, the civil war, you know, his, he's like the, the ultimate guy. When you look at, the, uh, fulfilling the American dream, starting poor, ending up at the top of your, uh, you know, your career category, his being politics. So I'm always excited to, uh, read about Lincoln and this book, is The Last Lincoln Conspirator, John Surratt's Flight from the Gallows. And it's by Andrew C.A. Jam Jampoler. And uh, I don't know much about John Surratt. I know he did get away. He's one of the guys they did not uh, end up hanging. And um, so this will give me a lot of new stuff on it. I'm pretty excited about that. I know quite a bit about the about the Lincoln assassination, but I don't know much about him per se. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And this is from the Naval Institute Press out of Annapolis, Maryland. And it is a 2008 book. And um, if I didn't mention, these books are all in very, very new condition. And so I'm very thankful for that. Thank you, Todd. These are in great shape. Um, always glad to have that. So our back cover has some... Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious what the story's about, so I won't, I won't uh, try it. Well, there is nothing to read on this one because it's just blurbs on the back, but the blurbs are from Michael W. Kaufman, Kate Clifford Larson, Edward Steers Jr. Um, you know, I'm familiar with two out of those three, and so uh, big name books from a big name publisher, so thank you, Todd. I'm very excited about that. Uh so the next one in the stack is Ashes of Glory, Richmond at War by Ernest B. Ferguson. And so uh, kind of a cool cover. All of these have got really neat covers. Um, there's that. And again, the, the back's got a bunch of blurbs on it. Russell Baker, Roger Mudd, Charles Royster, Charles McDowell, and Nathan Miller. And so uh, it's got a lot of, a lot of, praise for the book and this book ashes of glory is from alfred a knopf out of new york it's a 1996 book and i'll go ahead and read the cover of this one um says in april of 1865 as union troops strode unimpeded into the sh uh, charred city of richmond 13 year old emmy sublet gazed upon the horrible stars and stripes flying from the Capitol building and likened them to so many bloody gashes, a fitting and properly gory metaphor for the average Virginian's altered sentiments toward the country, uh, the country her forefathers had been so instrumental in founding. <coughs> Excuse me. The cause of that bitter alteration, alteration is known to all, but the particular fortunes of the Confederacy Capitol uh, capital city from the heady early days through the crushing surrender have received scant attention until now. In Ashes of Glory, Ernest B. Ferguson conjures up wartime Richmond in vivid detail. We meet not only with such luminaries as Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis, and Stonewall Jackson, but with the strikingly broad spectrum of the community, preachers, nurses, newspapermen, bureaucrats, entrepreneurs, slaves, slave dealers, bootleggers, actors, spies, prostitutes, prisoners of war, refugees, handsome widows, eager debutantes, and swarms of enlisted men and officers from all over the South. Ferguson ushers us into the legendary Spotswood Hotel, where generals and gentry communed amid gossip and bourbon. He admits 
us to the hospitals crammed with amputees and infested by rats. He plunges us into the bread riot involving several hundred citizens and spurred by a woman huckster. He shows us that, despite universal hardship, Richmond fairly crackled with spirit. Theater manager John Hill Hewitt kept melodrama flowing on the city's popular stages. Taffy parties, pharaoh uh, parlors, and sewing circles kept various other constituencies entertained. Colonel Thomas E. Rose of Pennsylvania and dozens more tunneled out of notorious Libby Prison. The genteel Union sympathizer Elizabeth Van Lu uh, conducted an elaborate and extraordinarily successful campaign of espionage. Meanwhile, beneath the uh, surface, a compound of defiance, despair, and paranoia preyed on the nerves of everyone from, from President Davis on down, turning a stunned and battered once glorious society virtually inside out. In this work of great um, verisimilitude uh, and potency, Ferguson resurrects a city in crisis and dramatically personalizes the conflict that was our nation's coming of age. Ashes of Glory will stand as the classic account of life in the southern capital at this decisive moment in American history. So this ought to be really good. It ought to put us, you know, like we were right there in Richmond with the soldiers. And it sounds like it's going to give us, you know, various viewpoints from the the top down to the bottom, from uh, you know, you know, from all walks of life. So that's going to be really good. I, I always like that kind of stuff. I love to, to see, you know, basically what society was like, what the people were like. Uh, the next book in the, in the stack here, almost done. Um, but it is the devil's own work, the civil war draft riots and the fight to reconstruct America by Barnett Schechter. Or Schechter. Not sure exactly how to say that. And this book is from Walker and Company out of New York, and it's from 2005. So the back, if you're wondering, the blurbs, oh man, this has got some great blurbs. You, you got from James McPherson, probably one of my all-time favorite Civil War authors, uh, Jay Winnick, Kevin Baker, Kenneth D. Ackerman, Kenneth T. Jackson, Craig Stephen Wilder. So, uh, you know, anything that's blurbed by James McPherson, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to be a pretty good read. But uh, this looks like it's going to be really interesting, you know, getting into that other book. That last book said it talked about, um, you know, some riots there in Richmond. This sounds like it's going to be the, the uh, New York riots, maybe, Civil War draft riots. So maybe New York, maybe, maybe the ones in the Confederacy, too. But anyway, let's read this, this cover here. Um, or inside flap, excuse me. On July 4th, 1863, Robert E. Lee and his Confederate army retreated in tatters from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and the Union began its march to ultimate victory in the Civil War. Nine days later, the largest riots in American history broke out on the streets of New York City, nearly destroying in four days the financial, industrial, and com commercial hub of the nation. Northerners suspected a Confederate plot carried out by local Copperhead sympathizers. However, the reality was more complex and far-reaching, exposing fault lines of race and class still present in America today. Angered by the Emancipation Proclamation and by the first federal military draft in U.S. history, which exempted those who could pay $300, New York's white underclass, whipped up by its conservative Democrat Democratic leaders raged against the powerful currents of social change and embodied by President Abraham Lincoln's Republican administration. What began as an outbreak against draft offices soon turned into horrifying mob assault on upper class houses and property. And on New York's African American community, the draft riots drove thousands of blacks to the fringes of white society, hastening the formation of large ghettos, including Harlem, in a once integrated city. As Barnett Schechter uh, dramatically shows in The Devil's Own Work, the cataclysm in New York was anything but an isolated incident. Rather, it was a micro microcosm within the borders, the supposedly loyal northern states of the larger civil war between the North and South. 
The riots erupted over the same polarizing issues of slavery versus freedom for African Americans and the scope of federal authority over the states and individuals that had torn the nation apart. And the riots aftermath foreshadowed the compromises that would bedevil reconstruction and delay the process of integration for the next hundred years. The story of the draft riots comes alive in the voices of passionate newspaper, newspaper rivals Horace Greeley and Manton Marble, Black Lee leader Reverend Henry Highland Garnett and the renegade Democrat Fernando Wood, I, Irish soldier Peter Welsh and conservative diarist Maria Daly, and many others. In chronicling this violent demonstration over the balance between the centralized power and the civil liberties in a time of national emergency, the devil's own work, Walt Whitman's characterization of the riots, it sheds new light on the Civil War era and the history of protest and reform in America. So that sounds really good. So my guess was half right. So it's going to be about the New York draft riots. It's not going to, uh, doesn't sound like it's going to talk about any of them that happened down south. So um, this will be really good because I have not read any like whole books on the draft riots. I've read, you know, books with chapters on it or one or two chapters, but not a whole book. So that'll be good. Um, so anyway, that brings us to the end of the book haul and possibly my most favorite part of the book haul, folks. Um, as I said earlier, I love Lincoln. You can see, you know, some of the Lincoln books. I've got a ton of them. Um, my, my collection, as I last year moved to over the 100 number, and I don't know what it is now. It's probably probably around 120-ish, something like that. Um, but Todd sent me a, a gem. So we've got the Lincoln Papers, a historically important selection of the Lincoln Papers first offered for public inspection in the Library of Congress in July of 1947, with the story of the collection and running commentary by David Mearns, Director of the Reference Department of the Library of Congress, an introduction by Carl Sandburg. This is absolutely awesome. So it's a two-volume set. It's got blurbs by Paul Angle, Charles Beard, Archibald McLeish, and James G. Randall. So I recognize three of those four. Um, those are all big-name um, authors of Lincoln stuff. And, of course, it says, let's see... Uh, by David C. Mearns, introduction by Carl Sandburg, uh, you know, volumes one and two. This does come from Doubleday, so let me pull out one of these books so you can see, you know, what your, what your uh, book looks like. Pretty excited about that. Uh, oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. That is awesome, Todd. Thank you so much. So, you know, it says the story of the collection with selections to July 4th, 1861. This is the Lincoln Papers by David C. Mearns. Um, introduction by Carl Sandburg. Volume 1, Doubleday and Company, Garden City, New York, 1948. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited about this. This is awesome. Uh, I've been, up until this last year, I did not have any books that were like the collected works of Lincoln. And this last year, I have picked up a few different copies of stuff like that. One of them's over, it's a real thin volume over in my reading pile by the lamp. I've got uh, the, um, the Library of America. Um, let's see, Civil War, didn't I? I think I've got one on Lincoln also, I think. Um, but anyway, I've been collecting some of these type of books that have got his collected papers. Because um, being a Lincoln nut like I know I am, I got to ask it myself, why do you not have any of those? And, and honestly, a lot of it came down to cost. Because when you start to buy the these type of reference books, the, the cost can start to get kind of high. So that makes me all the more excited that uh, Todd sent me this box set. I am I'm very thankful. Thank you so much, Todd. Uh, you have sent it to a good home. I will take care of it and treasure that. And uh, yeah, so thank you to Todd and Todd for these books in this in this uh, book haul. I'm very appreciative, very excited about every one of them. 
Uh, there isn't a single one that I'm not excited to read. So um, you guys did well. You did good, kids. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching, guys. I uh, Thank you for, for watching BookTube. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for all the new subscribers that have come to the channel. Um, if you're new, I'm really, really appreciating you uh, coming and viewing my my videos. If you've been here a while, I appreciate you too. So um, anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, until next time, BookTube, happy reading.